Hi everybody, my name is Tim. Uh, I go to the 10.45 a.m. service and we're up to day 11 of our winter devotional series as we're working through the first chapter of Colossians. And today we come to verse 15. Now let me read it for us. Now verse 15 says, He, that is Jesus, is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. Well, we all love a good oxymoron when we take uh, two words that appear opposite and we jam them together. Uh, sometimes it can be amusing when we're at the shops and we see something that is fresh frozen and we think, no, 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 you're just frozen. And sometimes it can be frustrating, like when I buy a Microsoft Works application and then it doesn't. Well, in our passage in a moment, we're going to be thinking about uh, what appears to be an oxymoron in our verse today. But before we do that, I want us to think about a little question. Uh, when we come up against things in the Bible that we don't understand, uh, what is your temptation and what is mine? Is it for me to assume that God is wrong and then I have to just accept that? Or is our assumption maybe that I don't understand God and that I need to think more deeply, pray and ask for God's spirit to enlighten me? Well, why don't you pause the video for a moment and think about that yourself? Well, as we come to our verse today, we do hit what appears to be an oxymoron. We're told that Jesus is the image of the invisible God. So which one is he? Is he an image, something that we can see, or is he invisible? Well, what I think Paul is getting at here as he says this is that in God, we have one of these glorious mysteries. He was the one who created everything before anything could be seen God was there, and yet he made everything, including us, including our eyes, with which we see. But this is the mystery of the gospel, that the God who made everything enters into his own world, into his own universe, physically, in the person and the work of Jesus Christ. That is, a God is still beyond our capacity to understand, and yet we know him because Jesus has come to earth. One of the reasons why I was so excited to move to Orange is that when you come out at night in a clear night sky with very little light pollution, you can lie back and look up and you can see the glorious sky with thousands of stars twinkling and knowing that those stars, the light in those stars have gone for thousands of light years just so that I can see them. What a glorious thing to think that the God who made all of these things is far bigger than this universe that we can see. And yet God loves us so much that he came to earth in a way that we could see and understand that Jesus is both fully God and yet he is a man like you and me as well so that we can know him and that through his life and death and resurrection, we can be friends with God as well. Now, what about the second part of this passage where we see that Jesus is the firstborn over all creation? Oh, well, in the next couple of days, as we continue in this series, we'll see that Jesus isn't a created part of God's universe, but Jesus has been there from the beginning. Oh, what Paul is getting at then, I think, is that Jesus is the firstborn uh, in as much as he is the heir of all things that God has made. As God the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit work together, uh, Jesus is the inheritor of all of the good things that have been made. That means that Jesus is the ruler of creation. So what does this mean for you and me? Well, I think there are two big things that this means. Our first is, it's good for us to have a bigger picture of Jesus. We can think of him not only as a person who entered into creation and met with people and ate fish in front of them and was tactile, but also that he is the ruler of all creation. But secondly, we can be reminded, as Ephesians 1.5 tells us, that we are adopted into God's family as well. Not that that makes us the rulers of all creation, but that we too are inheritors of God's great promises and one of those promises is eternal life with him. So my question for us to think about as we finish is, what does it look like to live our lives in light of the knowledge that we will inherit eternity in the future? 
Well, let's think about that and let's pray our living and active prayer together now. Dear Father, you are big and we are small. You are the holy ruler of all. When we read your word, you speak to us. We have heard you speak and so we pray, forgive us, renew us, grow our knowledge of you and help us bear fruit, making our faith living and active. Amen.